See this 1947 rodeo chassis here? One of the first things you'll notice is that there are no electrolytic cans mounted above the chassis. No sign of any cans there. And nothing there. This, by the way, this radio is a 1947 STC model made by Standard Telephones and Cables of Sydney in 1947. And uh, I think we can have a look underneath now. We've established that there are no electrolytic cans above the chassis. So let's have a look underneath and see where the electrolytics are. There's the front of it. Uh, now I've got a Got to... Ah, there we go. Right. Now, underneath, I'll bring this down a bit. Underneath, there are only two electrolytic capacitors, and I replaced them in a matter of minutes. It only took me about five minutes maximum to replace the two electrolytic capacitors with the correct value. Um, they're the only two electrolytic capacitors. There aren't any others under here. They're all the rest are just ordinary capacitors. And you've got a few resistors and a couple of coils. And so, the point I'm making here is that it is much, much easier to replace electrolytic capacitors that are located under the chassis and not in a can on top of the chassis. I'll show you what... I'll just put this back over here. I'll just show you what a electrolytic can mounted above a chassis looks like just for those who haven't seen one there you go there is that thing there is an electrolytic can capacitor and to make things even more complex it's not just one single value capacitor there's three capacitors in the one can in this thing here and here they are the three values are 40 microfarads 40 microfarads 20 microfarads 350 volts Jucon so to replace that is a real pain well from my point of view anyway that's why I don't like electrolytics being placed in a can. You've got to work out, uh, if you want to disconnect it and just put in three ordinary electrolytics, you've got to work out which you need a circuit. I haven't even got a circuit for this thing when it was in one piece. It's, uh, it's just too much trouble. It's much easier to replace an electrolytic that's mounted under the chassis and not on top. So down on the floor where you belong. That's why I like this particular radio and I've got another one an AWA. Like I said, it's so easy to replace them. Now, some people go to the trouble of actually looking around for old NOS stock because they want to keep their electrolytic can 
capacitors on on top of the chassis I wouldn't even bother and one man I saw even pulls them pulls them up to pieces and and restuffs them with whatever you put in those things uh, I wouldn't go to that too much trouble uh, I wouldn't even consider it and another thing too a lot of those electrolytic can capacitors contain PCBs toxic materials so that's another reason why I wouldn't even attempt to do that so that's the story oh one other thing I read uh, somebody posted once uh, better quality receivers usually have the electrolytics mounted above the chassis in a can that's not right this is a good quality receiver and it's got the electrolytics mounted under the chassis so I dispute that I would say that better quality receivers have the electrolytics mounted underneath not on top because that one, where did I throw it on the floor? Come back here. See this one here? This is a cheap ACDC set. Really, really cheap. Uh, it's just rubbish and it's got an electrolytic. So I rest my case.